All right, good morning, everybody. If we can uh, have everybody gather up and uh, take your seats, if you wish. And we are going to start the ceremony this morning. I'll give everybody a little opportunity to, to move around. All right, good morning. Uh, thank you, everybody, for attending today's ceremony. I think it's going to be a very special ceremony for all of us today in remembrance of 1 October, and I appreciate uh, your participation. So without further ado, Honor Guard, please present the colors. For those of you that can stand, please stand.
Commissioner Gibson. Our Father in heaven, we gather today to remember the remainder to remember the enormity of the loss that we experienced four years ago this day, to remember the pain and the discomfort that came into our lives as we learned and then as we have lived these past years. We remember the enormity of the heroism that was a part of life in this valley on the night of the tragedy and for days and weeks and months and years since. To remember what we learned about ourselves as a community and to remember how important it is for us to reflect on what we can do for others. Our prayer this day is that we might take these thoughts incorporate them into our lives once again and bring real peace and unity to our community. We pray thy blessing on these events, on those who participate, on all of us, that we might be lifted and lift one another. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay, at this time we will uh, proceed with the ceremony and our order of speakers will be first up, uh, Governor Steve Sisolak. Thank you, Sheriff. It is humbling to be here on this day. Today is not the only day that we remember the lives that were lost in 1 October. I know I remember them every day. I know you remember them every day. The pain that is felt by the families, the friends, the community as an after effect of what happened on 1 October doesn't get any easier. It doesn't get any softer. Unfortunately, this tragedy will live on in our lives and in our memories forever. And the lives that were lost and the families and the people that were affected will never be forgotten. And I just want you to know on behalf of the great state of Nevada and the over three million people that call Nevada home, you are constantly in our hearts and in our prayers. God bless you all. Have a, have a best of the celebration you can make of the lives that were lost on that day. Thank you for your words, Governor. So, good morning. For those who may not know, I'm Sheriff Joe Lombardo. And as we again, again, gather to remember the events of 1 October, let's remember back to the days after 1 October, when we all became Vegas strong. Those words were not just part of a slogan, in those days and weeks following the shooting, we became one of, as a community. We focused on helping each other through a tragedy that at this time, at that time, seemed almost unbelievable. Thousands of people came together to help care for survivors, to provide comfort for the families of the victims, to thank first responders for rushing in to help. We now have a chance to stand together again. We can take this opportunity to reach out to those who are still struggling, who are still mourning. We can offer comfort to those who even now may not realize how that traumatic event four years ago has changed their lives. Just recently, we gathered to remember the 20th anniversary of 9-11. As a nation, we united against a common enemy after that terrorist attack. We united to help each other through. Here in Las Vegas, we again faced the tragedy of a domestic terror attack, and it, and it forever changed us as a community 
and LVMPD as a law enforcement agency. Let's not forget one of the most important lessons learned, that we are always stronger together. It's time for all of us to reclaim the spirit that made us Vegas strong. God bless you, and thank you for your participation here today. Commissioner Kirkpatrick. Good morning. Uh, thank you all for coming. It is really our pleasure to continue to host this at Clark County, along with our friends at Metro, our fire department, and the Resiliency Center. Um, it's just four years ago that separated us from this very day. And what I would tell you, it doesn't make it any easier, um, but as a community, we continue to process it and move forward. As time marches on, it won't be any less important. It will be part of our history, part of what we need to, we can learn from, and we will constantly be continuing to heal those folks that were impacted on that day. Our entire community and across the country, so many people um, were impacted. What I can tell you is Clark County is very proud to be um, working through the memorial because we wanna make it extremely special for all of those, there, there were people from across the country that participated um, in the process. As we walk through it, it's been done very methodically, um, very timely so that we could actually hear, dig deep and figure out what people really want to see and know for um, the future um, generation so they could understand that. So um, we've already had, uh, we have a seven committee member that we put in place uh, just last year. They, uh, in, even in these times of COVID, they've been able to still um, make progress to talk to families, to talk to survivors, to talk to community members that stepped up on that very day. Um, we sent out a survey, the first survey, we had about 6,000 people participate. Um, that also led us to a second survey, which we had about 5,000 people. The one thing that, um, I, and I remember so many of my friends out there, um, uh, you know, uh, we talked about what does this look like. Uh, we didn't want to hurry it um, because we wanted to really take our time. Uh, we watched around the country how people quickly did something, uh, but it, we in Clark County knew that it was such a tragic impact to us that we wanted to make sure that it had an everlasting meaning. And one of the things that came out of the first survey, and I remember the conversations, people going back and forth on where would be the right place. Um, but what we did find out of the survey from many of the family members, many of the survivors and the community that they really wanted to, it to be at the Route 91, um, festival plaza that was happened that night. So we are so thankful that um, MGM donated that land. Um, so that will be the home of our memorial. And that'll be one piece of it, right? Because it's in our hearts and it circulates throughout the valley all the time. Um, so as we move through to the next process, um, we encourage everybody to be part of it because we want you to stay engaged with us. We want you to know how are you feeling today as opposed to two years ago, one year ago. So I encourage all of you to continue to stay with us at Clark County because it will be something that we can all be proud of. Um, today I have most of my committee members here um, that are part of the 1 October. Um, they want to raise their hands. Would they like to stand? I feel like this flag is in my way. So. <laughs> uh, well, I'll be here, so I'll uh, uh, send you to them in the rotunda. I know most of them will be in the rotunda at the end. So I encourage you to be part of it. Thank you so much for coming out to, um, to showcase the community that we are, how we can come together when times are tough, how we can move forward and really remember who we are and what we stand for. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. At this point, we'll have Ms. Hyatt um, come to the dais. And Ms. Hyatt is the sister of Kurt Von Tillo. Good morning. 
Good morning. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Thank you all for being here um, to honor our angels. Uh, it's it's really heartwarming to see everyone. My name is Deanne Hyatt. My brother is Kurt Bontello, one of our 58 angels. Our family's story is a little bit unique in that um, we had six family members that night at the concert. Um, that fateful night, my brother Kurt was killed. My daughter was uh, wounded pretty significantly. Um, I was wounded. Those physical wounds have healed, um, but the lasting scars for our family remain and, and go on, like all of our families and all of our angels' families. Um, Coming to Las Vegas had been kind of a reunion for our family. It was, we had so much fun. We had people that had moved to different places and uh, it was like a reunion of family and friends, um, partying, dancing, enjoying the music, enjoying football on Sunday. And um, we really had an amazing time for the last four years uh, prior to that to that night, or the last three years prior to that. Um, and that came to a tragic and unimaginable ending. Um, we continue to live the impact of all that happened that night four years later, as, as we all do. The trickle down effect of this tragedy could not be anticipated, but is so significant. Relationships built and relationships torn down People thrive and people struggle. Um, we live with the physical and mental pain and our lives are forever changed. It is such a helpless feeling. For me, I, I've always been a, a fixer uh, by nature and in my career. Uh, but I learned that some things can't be fixed. Um, all you can do is be there for each other listen, cry, hug, love, and support one another. It's hard to understand what any person, no matter how close they are to you, it's hard to understand what they go through. And it reminds you that you just need to be patient and loving and caring to everyone you meet because you don't know what they're going through. The amazing realization for me in this past four years is that there are those people in this world who are here to help, provide hope, lend support, and be the good. As I prepared what I was going to say, I watched the speeches by Minda, Joe, and, and Albert. Um, I had a feeling of joy as all of their messages over these past three years have been about hope and about love and despite the heaviest of hearts and the and the you just loss you can imagine they stood up here and just shared a, a message of hope how does this amazing spirit rise from the depths of despair we are resilient as human, be human beings, our ability to choose the good, I believe, can be life-saving for us. As we continue through this journey, our empathy for others who suffer tragedy like we've gone through has increased because of our understanding of what they go through. When you see things on the news and we just, your heart goes out because you know and you understand that their lives are going to be forever changed. The outpouring of love and support that has lifted up our family over these years began immediately with text messages the next day, the, with text messages from our family, our friends, and strangers all over the country and Canada. Can I say that? 
who um, have reached out to us. When we returned home, uh, for me, my family, there were flowers, messages, flags on our doorsteps. Um, the outpouring of love continued because of the good that is Minda Smith and her beautiful family at the first anniversary and Melissa Williams coordinating the Angels games for, for the 58 and survivors, a new bond was formed um, that will never be broken because of the love and goodness of our friend Tommy Marr and more families and survivors came together to be the good. We met people all over the country and Canada that reached out to us just wanting to honor my brother. We met a beautiful woman named Lindsay Lawler in Tennessee who wanted to honor him. He was a trucker and a truck owner and they wanted to honor him at a convention uh, as, a, as a driver and uh, they had us come to Nashville and they honored him and it was, it was the beginning of some really, really deep healing for our family. We have met so many beautiful, resilient people who have gone through the most terrible and unimaginable thing but still stand tall, lift others up despite their own grieving. Their empathy and their strength remind us of the power of human spirit and the spirit that lives in all of us. In closing, I want to share a message that I received within the first week after October 1st. It touched me so much and is a great example of how we might touch people in our day-to-day -day lives with kindness, outreach, listening, and acknowledging them no matter what the circumstances. This is from a gentleman that my brother met um, as he was traveling across the country in his truck, and this gentleman sold him tires occasionally. He said, and I'm quoting his um, his message to me on Facebook Messenger. <laughs> he said, I wanted to send someone who was close to Kurt a message because I just need to express how deep and hurt, how deep my hurt is after learning of this timeless tragedy. I wanted to let you know that I'm praying for you and your family. Even though you don't know me and I, I knew and loved Kurt for the person that he was, I worked for GCR Tire in Colorado I sold tires to Kurt occasionally, and I got to know him over the years. Last night when I learned of his death, excuse me, I was heartbroken and didn't sleep a wink. I can only imagine what you guys are going through. I've been praying ever since to try and understand this. I know I never will. Please give Mary Jo and all the family my deepest condolences and I know there, and know that there is a church here in Colorado praying for you and lifting you up before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This morning, I called his cell phone just because I wanted to hear his voice. We still do that. He was my friend, and we used to have some pretty serious discussions to solve all the world's problems. Of course, we never did, but it was always good. He was more to me than just another customer. Please know that I will continue to pray for all of your recovery from this tragedy. I will ever, forever hold Kurt in my heart and will always remember him. God bless all of you in this time of remembering Kurt. His name is Michael Wold and he's in Colorado. That is who my brother Kurt was. I'm blessed to have had him as my brother. I'm blessed to be here. I'm blessed to have my daughter, to have my niece, to have my husband and my sister-in-law who I love so much on this journey with me. To plagiarize a little bit of my friend Albert's message from last year, <laughs> I would like to quote another group of philosophers, Old Dominion, <laughs> life is short, make it sweet. In closing, I just wanna also thank all the first responders um, and everywhere, Our, my community um, has tragedy with fires and um, and there was an amazing first responder that helped us that night and I just want to say thank you so much and uh, you have no idea what your what your love and your kindness and your sacrifice means to all of us thank you so much God bless y'all
Thank you very much, Dean. At this point, um, Mr. Sky, can you come forward and Everybody, my name is Matt Sky, and uh, I want to be singing a song that my good friend Mark Johnson wrote, um, just to uh, to represent everybody and uh, whoever lost someone or uh, was affected by that tragic day. So the song's called Four Years After.
Honor Guard Commander, please retrieve the colors.
detail. Two. Enter. Three. Three, three. Come. Enter. Three. Over. Out. Uniform personnel, please stand at ease. Well, as we close out the ceremony today, I, I once again want to show my appreciation for everybody attending. Um, sometimes people in the back of their minds think about whether we should continue this into the future. And in my opinion, it would be in perpetuity. I think it's appropriate that we continue to remember the people that made the ultimate sacrifice at the expense of our community as a whole. And it also remi reminds us to come together as a community. We're only as strong as our ability to come together. And before I conclude the ceremony, I, I would be remiss without recognizing some individuals that are, are very important to today's ceremony and the overall functioning of our uh, county government and the success of our community. And that would be uh, our county manager, Yolanda King, who is standing here at the stage, um, County Commissioner Justin Jones, County Commissioner William McCurdy, and County Commissioner Michael Knapp. Thank you for your attendance today. And we all know uh, and have met um, County Commissioner Marilyn Kirkpatrick and County Commissioner Jim Gibson. Thank you. And before we also break, um, I think we deserve, two individuals deserve another round of applause uh, for their um, words today and their performance today, and that's Mr. Sky and Mr. H Mrs. Hyatt. Thank you. So as you take solace in conclusion of the ceremony, uh, please take the opportunity to go to the rotunda here to my right, to your left, and uh, take remembrance of the uh, folks that made the ultimate sacrifice. And also, there's members of the Vegas Strong Resiliency Center there that can provide services if you're in need of those. And take the opportunity to uh, turn to your neighbor and say thank you for being here and welcoming them into your life. Thank you. God bless. <laughs> 